Hi friends, today we'll cover the basics of Docker on a Windows 11 machine, but the command line will be the same on Mac or Linux. Docker is a software development tool mostly for developers to help them build, test and deploy applications quickly. But you don't have to be a developer in order to start using Docker. You can use it just for a Linux shell terminal. It's a lot easier than setting up a VM. You can download a Docker desktop at the following link. And the installation is straightforward. Alternatively, you can use a web-based playground online provided by Docker. You'll need a Docker account, which you can create for free. All mentioned links and commands are in the description. Whether you use a desktop on Windows, Mac, Linux or the cloud-based CLI, you can follow the instructions in this video. If you're not familiar with the CLI, then watch my video about working with Windows Terminal or macOS Terminal Tips. You can start using Docker for free, but for pro tools and large companies, you'll need a paid subscription. I'll be using Docker as a test environment in order to quickly load and configure different types of shells and to easily commit any changes I want to keep. This helps me to load and commit different environments for my YouTube tutorial videos quickly. For this tutorial, I would suggest using two terminals, one for Docker and one for your local host, because we'll be using them side by side. In Windows Terminal, you can use Alt Shift D to open a new vertical pane. Use one for Docker and one for your local host. At the Docker Hub, you can find different images which you can pull, where you can also create a free personal account. Best to start with official images, which are secure and maintained. On the right side, you can see the command to use in order to pull the image in your desktop environment using CLI. Let's start by pulling the Alpine Linux distro, but you can use any other image. Open your terminal and enter docker pull, followed by the image name. If you receive an error, then docker is probably not running. Open the docker desktop application and return to the CLI to run the pull request again or try restarting Docker from the tray. After the pull request is done, enter Docker images to see the image we just pulled. This shows an overview of all the images on your system. Docker images can be referred to by repository name or by ID. Docker images are created using Docker files and Docker containers are created using Docker images. We'll be working with images and containers in this video. To run an image, we use the following format. But we also need to use the dash IT flag, which stands for interactive terminal. We do this because we want to use the shell. This ensures the commands we enter in our terminal are binded from our host terminal to the container. We end the docker command with sh to indicate that we want to run the shell. Because Alpine Linux is lightweight, you don't have bash available. With other distro images like Ubuntu or Rocky Linux, you have bash and can change this command accordingly from shell to bash. After executing the command, you are placed inside the Alpine Linux shell as root user under root directory and you can navigate and run commands accordingly. Let's create an empty file under home directory as a reference for this container. Every time you run an image, a new container is created based on that image. You can get an overview of your containers by entering docker ps from the host terminal. While your Alpine container is running, 
select your host terminal and then run docker ps to show the container we just created by running the alpine image this shows only the running containers the containers list shows an id which image it's from and the command used to run it just remember that with docker images you get a list of images and with docker ps you get the containers in order to exit out of the container simply enter exit in your docker terminal this will place you back in the host terminal if you run docker ps again you'll see that the container is missing that's because it has stopped after exiting in order to get a list of all containers that are running or stopped use the dash a flag let's run the alpine image again then go back to our host terminal and enter docker ps dash a where we can see two containers one stopped which is the first container we ran and one running every time you run an image it creates a new container alternatively to the dash a flag you can use dash l to show the last container you ran inside the new container if we navigate to the home directory we don't see the file we just created that's because each container is based on the original image and that image remains intact any changes we make are saved inside the container we've now created two containers out of the alpine image now let's run an existing con container instead of an image exit out of the second container now we have two containers both stopped in order to access an existing con container first we need to make sure it's running we do that by entering docker start followed by the co container id let's start our first container again then we use the docker exec command with the same options as docker run now when we navigate to the home directory and list the content we can see the file we created before now let's install some packages on this alpine container using the package manager apk i've covered package manager apt and dnf in two separate videos and we'll try to do the same for apk for alpine in a future video let's update the repository with apk update and upgrade the installed packages with apk upgrade because we're already logged in as a root we don't need to prefix sudo now let's install bash and vim then add a new user with the home directory add the user to the veal group which is the same as sudo group for debian based distros and change the password for root feel free to change anything else you like because next we'll create an image out of this container now that we're happy with the changes we've made to this con container we can create an image from it so that other containers can be created from it for this we use the docker commit command exit out of the container or select your host terminal and enter docker ps a to get the container id we want to use first let's make sure the container is stopped by entering docker stop followed by the id then enter docker commit followed by the container id you want to use and then a name for the new image now if we do docker images we can see our new image created from the alpine container now each time we, we run this image the changes we made are available for the containers if you have containers that you don't wish to use later you can delete them using docker rm followed by the container id the container needs to be stopped 
in order to be removed. And if you want to delete an image, use Docker RMI followed by the image name. But there can't be any containers running from that image. If at some point you have a lot of containers or images and you want to clean up, use the Docker container prune or Docker image prune with dash a flag. This will remove all stopped containers or images. Alternatively, you can use docker system prune a to purge all unused images, containers, volumes and networks. You can also start the shell of a container with a different user than root and also define which directory to start in by using the following parameters. You can also add this to the list of your aliases to run it faster. Hope this video about Docker helps you to experiment faster with shells and applications and I hope to see you in the next video.